Hello everybody, welcome to Cougar Talk. Today we are going to be looking into um, the new patch because in the upcoming podcast we're actually going to bring something very special to you guys um, and it's not going to be talking about the patch notes. It's going to be talking about something completely different that we think uh, is going to help a lot of the player base out there to think and to understand some concepts of the game in order to improve their play style. Um, I'm really excited about that podcast and I hope you guys will find it as just as exciting as we have. We've been working on talking about this for a while and hopefully you guys will like the topic that we have picked out for you. In that notice, um, we are going to go look at these patch notes this is the pts uh gina and jessica actually read this the other day on on stream before maintenance was happening um so it's this is update 39 which means that there's no new dlc there's no new area nothing this is just for bugs fixes quality of life improvements and such so this is going to be quite a very nice patch because they're just fixing stuff and they are um doing a couple of things to some classes and such but it's not going to be a big dlc dungeon or anything like that or a major update it's just gonna be them fixing just quality of life stuff some bugs that have been in the game and trying to make the game just overall better um when i read about this um like how they were gonna do the new quarters i was very excited about this particular quarter because to be honest this is something the game needs um and it really sucks for cinemax necessarily because they're not necessarily making any money this update is free um so they're actually losing money in a new dlc they're not going to gain anything other than just keeping the fans happy which i really do think it was a major part that they needed to do they needed something like this and i'm very very excited that um when they mentioned this i I was so relieved because i knew this is something they needed to do in some way shape or form and it sucks for them because it means that they're losing money in the fourth quarter um, of the year but guys to be honest it will be okay for them (laughs) they're making money in the crown stores speaking of crown stores um one thing um that the crown stores are are happening is that the they brought back the new gifting um the new gifting thing for that you will need to create an account in the elder scrolls online.com and you know if you don't have one you need to select billing purchase code select your prop platform you'll be sending the crates from and then um you need to select i have a question about a sale or offer then give crown crates to a friend enter their psn you you uh, psn id the user character id if you can um and then the select the bundle and then submit once this have once this has been submitted you have to wait for an approval and response um the there are quite a few rules though the tune you are sending these to or i'm sorry the tune you are sending these from must be at least a level 50 tune Um, your account cannot have any violations in the past six months and your account must be at least 90 days old. Gifting can only be done to the same mega server platform. So if you want to give somebody in PC and you're in PS4, you're not going to be able to do that, unfortunately. But in order to continue and be able to give crown crates to people, this is something that you guys are going to need to be doing. Um, I do not like it, but guess what guys like it it is what it is That's just That's just how it is. Um, we did put uh, This in our discord Steve from all gold everything the GM of all gold everything Kindly um, put that together for us is currently pinned in our guild chat section 
in Discord if you would like to um, know the steps. It everything the link is in there. Everything else is in there. All right, so let's let's get into it. In addition to many bug fixes, we've spent some time improving some in-game experiences for newer players, cleaned up some item set sourcing, and added a number of new achievements for content. And we've also uh, added a few updates for PvP, including new monster mask face and body markings, a new P uh, PvP death notification feature, and improving the loot drop from scamps in Imperial City. The full list of new features and updates can be read below, and all PCNA characters have been copied this week. So this is absolutely amazing. Um, this is the table contents. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm not going to read this entirely because I've already read this. Um, one good thing that they're improving for new players is... Because when you're a new player and you go into the game, there's quest pins everywhere. Um, now, you're going to be able to obtain these quests before your level if you know where to go. So for newer players, they're not going to necessarily know where to go uh, for these. Or they might stumble upon it, but they're going to be able to get um, these at specific levels. So like the Prophet and the other base game uh, quests will now only appear in the chapter in the DLC cities after you're at least level 5. So they want you, they want you to explore the zone a little bit, um, get acquainted. Level 5 is not really that hard to get. To be honest, um, you should be able to get to level 5 pretty quick um, after you come out of the prison. Uh, story quests, not the guild quests, um, will only be visible for level 5 or above. Same thing of this, uh, once you become, you know, get to the profit and the base game quest, you're going to be able to join the Fighters Guild and the Mages Guild that way. Um, yeah. And then... <laughs> Barra Moresmith does not chase you down anymore. Instead, waiting patiently by the guild entrance to flag you down. Oh my god, thank god. Dude, that chick needs to chill. Um, that is that is 100% awesome. Thieves Guild and Dark Brotherhood, um, they require you to be level 5 as well. And then level 6 for the housing. Um, and to play trivia, you need to be at least level six, and, um, I don't think, uh, they yell at you outside of High Isle, so you have to reach level six before they do that. Now, <clears throat> crafting certifications, a lot of people are very mad about this, and I'm like, you can't even craft until you get to level six, so why does that matter? There you go, like, level six, this is normal, like, you have to be at least level 6 to get crafting uh, writs done. So there you go. Um, now the world events, Delve, world boss dailies, um, all of that is going to be level 7. The Undaunted, level 7. Daily quests for um, Fighters Mages Guild, level 7. Battleground, level 10. Which makes sense because level 10 is PvP land. And Battlegrounds is PvP. That is one thing that I was like, why don't they just put these two together? Um, but uh, the Undaunted introductory quests are also level 10. I'm not too sure about that, but they have to have a madness to their <clears throat> to their um, just way of thinking of that. So I would let them put that two together. Zone Vectoring quests are going to be level 15. So Craglorn is going to be that um, kind of an adventuring quest, which makes sense because Craglorn's not very, very easy for newer players, um, unless you're knowing, you know what to do. <clears throat> Prologue quests are going to be level 15, uh, which is nice because, hey, you don't want to go on a prologue quest in the middle of, like, the main quest. Trial introductory quests will be uh, only available to players level 50 and above. And, and above in cities, you can still get them in the trials themselves. Um, that's... 
it is what it is. I don't agree with that because <clears throat> I think you should be able to get them before level 50 in the normals. But I understand that as a new player, you probably have no business speed in a normal trial even before level 50. So I get it. I just don't agree with that. But it is what it is. Navigator quest pins. Um, they introduced a new system that um, they have for navigators in Tamriel's major cities. And they take you to the locations where you have quests. So this manifest is a door pin that is typically used for transit between spaces. Um, so you'll see like the little door pin above the navigator's head. Um, so there you go. Now they updated to event tickets. You're no longer going to be losing event tickets from looted sources and only looted as quest ones already have that warning. They did the quest one where they say, hey, you're, you're going to be getting this. Understand your tickets are full, blah, blah, blah. So they have that from looted um, such as well. Now this is pretty awesome. New Cyrodiil Monster Mask. There's three. The mask and shoulders can be purchased from the Elite Gear Bender and three new containers for 50k AP each and style pages can be purchased from the War Researcher Vendors for 150k AP. This is actually pretty nice. It gives PvPers monster masks um, to do stuff with, whether they be good or bad. I mean, we'll see how they goes. I'm not a big PvPer. Um, I will let the PvPers in the guild um, understand and talk about this uh, more in depth because I'm not 100% sure on this. Um, we have the adds 129 weapon and spell damage. Dealing damage applies a stack. Reducing healing taken for 5 seconds up to 35 stacks. And then you add stacks to yourself. So, I mean, this is not bad. Like I said, I'm not a big PvPer. So, I'm not 100% sure how good these are. Um, I just, whenever I go into PvP, is mainly to just go nuts. And cause as much wreckage as I can with my PvE builds. Um... This one, crit resistance, so this might be like a tankier set. When you're forcefully moved via pull, knockback, or teleport, gain a damage shield that absorbs up to 15,112 damage for 6 seconds. So this is actually not bad for, um, I wonder if this works with, uh, like Dark Convergence and Plague Break and all that stuff. I wonder if that actually works with that. And while you do not have the damage... A shield from the set reduce your damage taken by from players by five percent. So if you don't have the shield, you're gonna get a five percent uh, damage de uh, debuff or buff to to not doing that. So it's not bad. Um, Colovian Highlands general offensive pen. When you kill a player, gain a stack of blood debt for zero point five seconds. When blood debt expires, you and up to five group members gain fifteen ulti per stack of blood debt. I was looking at this while I was listening, and I mean, like I said, guys, if you're a pvp -er, this is a pve -er here, okay? I'm just talking out of my butt right now, but wouldn't it be cool to have, like, little, um, what is it called? Little bombing squads, and, <laughs> I mean, 28 meters is not that big of a meter, like, it's not a group thing. But wouldn't it be awesome to have, like, five bombing dudes just going in all together and then they gain ulti? So, like, ulti, ulti stacking with this. Um, I'm Like I said, I'm not sure I'm not a PvPer, but I just think that would be hilarious to have five bombers in a group. And they just go and bomb and, like, just bomb, 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 and bomb the Zergs and whatnot in, in a keep. Um, or even having sending like two like having maybe four bombers in the group and a healer and then just sending two bombers in the first wave and then the two bombers in the second wave and have this stupid thing on I mean like I said I, I'm not 100% sure it's it'll be it'll be funny 
that's what I thought. Um, we've also added the new PvP phase and body mark set, um, battle markings. This is gonna require 100,000 AP to purchase and 50 gladiator proofs. Um, so that's gonna be the new, uh, I think it's probably gonna be like a little room box. Um, they have some stuff like that already in the 50 gladiator proofs. That's gonna be like the big one. This is not, this is not that bad. The 100 KAP is not bad. It's the, the 50 proofs. Um, <clears throat> that's probably gonna be like, let's say that you PvP with two tunes. That's probably gonna be a month worth of gladiator proofs. If you PvP with more than one, then obviously it's gonna be a little bit different. But, um, <clears throat> There you go. Alright, so PvP death notification. The They added a new death notification to Cyrodiil, Imperial City, and Battlegrounds to give you more details about combat and death. This new chat feature will alert you to who defeated whom, around what area the death occur, and show alliance ranks of those in the battle. In Cyrodiil and Imperial City specifically, you will also get more information in Cross Swords, showing who's currently winning in that particular fight. Um, cross swords indicators are displayed when there have been three or more kills in an area within a short period of time and last for 30 seconds after the initial creation if no more deaths occur. That's pretty cool. So the you know the cross swords that appear in PvP or whatnot? They're gonna show that a little bit more. Um, especially if there's been three or more kills in an area within a short period of time, whatever that is. And the last uh, and lasts for 30 seconds after the initial creation if no more deaths occur. Um, that's that's pretty cool. On the Battlegrounds, this messaging will be turned... Whatever the heck that word is. Um, these notifications can be toggled on and off. That's good, because like that could get annoying very fast. Now, they improved the scamps in the Imperial Cities. Cunning scamps will now reward a greatly increased quality of Telvar stones. And it's not going to be multiplied, guys, so don't don't think about, hey, like, I'm going to put a bunch of Telvar. It's not going to be multiplied, so don't worry about it. Uh, and then Troll Scamps will now drop a tradable piece of Imperial City gear in addition to their previous rewards. Um, so you have PA. Oh, this is, this is pretty hot. This is sick. So troll scams are literally the ones to kind of go for if you're if you're wanting like gear from PV like from Imperial City, that's lit. Uh, PA is still very good. Uh, Imperial physique is still pretty good. I think people are still using Black Rose, um, Shield Breaker kind of I guess. Phoenix is not as good as it used to be, but there's some pretty good sets still being used, still worth a lot of money. The Ice Staff of PA is still like a hefty 500k amount at least. Um, in conjunction with this change, we're also lowering the number of scamps required to kill for the following achievements. Because these guys are not going to appear as much as they are now. They're going to appear less. So there you go. Trove Scam 15 to 5, 100 to 10. 15 to 5 and then 100 to 10. I mean, that's a pretty big gap actually um, it, it yeah, I guess I guess that's pretty cool um, That way you don't have to spend if you're not if you're an achievement hunter and you are not like wanting to stay in Imperial City This is actually gonna help you a little bit more um, I really do want to see the You know how how like how much they do change the the um, the scamps and how often they come. Um, so in this update, they add a new achievements. Completing a mythic is gonna grant you an achievement for all the mythics in a given zone. So if you complete the Oaken Soul, um, you will be given an achievement, and then um, getting to level ten and level fifty will trigger an achievement. Antiquities that are required to find you multiple fragments will now have an achievement associated with them. Fencing 20,000 gold worth of items will now trigger an associated achievement. Dungeon collectibles are now usable. Using all the necessary items will trigger the, the associated achievement and award the collectible. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> so there's a lot of achievements that are going to be added to the game. Um, 
for those achievement people. Which, I mean, I, I'm not sure exactly what the point of this is. But I'm sure there is one. Maybe people are like, why are we doing... I mean, I guess this makes it to where people need to do some of these achievements if they're achievement hunters so like it makes people play some versions of the game they might not be playing um so there you go so lower the count for many achievements which includes the medals awarded for chaos ball and relic uh g lars dailies or Sinian achievements and the city treasure and telvar scamps Updates to item set sourcings in order to make it easier to find and obtain various items. Um, we clean up some set sourcing. So the rewards of the worthy um, are going to be new, the newest item sets. And then the older sets are going to get removed from the, remo the rewards of the worthy and then added to other sources. Um, so like Delves, Dolmens, War Missions, Daily Quest, Town Merchants, those guys. Um, that's pretty cool. So Town Daily Quest and Town Merchants will be divided by Light, Medium, and Heavy. Um, not in Chenandal, Coral, or Wine and Prairie. And all PvP sets are available as individual containers. Um, price is 12k and 20k. Um, and then all PvP items sets will not drop from Cyrodiil, Delves, Dolmens, and Board Missions. Dolmens will drop jewelry, war missions will drop all other armor pieces, and then Delves will drop waste and feed items. Bounty and scout missions will award... That's pretty awesome, because instead of just getting AP, like, you're gonna be able to get sets from board missions, which is very nice, actually. Um, this also, like, these Delves and Dolmens will encourage players to actually go and do some PvE stuff, in Delves and Dolmens so while adding that PvP concept to it. Um, I remember when the Lich set was being farmed in PvP land. Um, and you needed to go to PvP to, to get the Lich set. And man, that was scary because you're like, oh crap. Am I gonna get ganked here? Um, and sometimes it happened. Sometimes it happened. And the, that was like the best in slot for the healers at that time, the Shroud of the Lich set, before it got put into Crypto Hearts. Um, and you needed to, not only, not only did you need to wait for the correct boss, which was a grind in itself, like the, the gear was selling for a mil, like the staff was selling for like a mil plus. And then like the hat and the shoulders were just some ridiculous amount. It was a, I think it was a three piece set at the time instead of the five piece. And all the, I think all of the stuff in the five piece set was in the three piece set. Um, but it was insane because for the, when the Lich um, main boss came out, that's where you got the head and shoulders. And then, and it wasn't a guaranteed drop either. Like, maybe one person out of the group of five that were in there with you farming it, maybe one person got it. Um, maybe two. The head and shoulders were actually easier to get than the staff. The staff was from the, um, the sisters, the three sisters. And, man, that was, that was a battle in itself. Um... So, like, not only did you have to go into a dolmen in PvP land and wait for one of those two bosses to come out to farm that set, which was best in slot, um, you had to wait <laughs> and pray that, hey, that, you know, when that lich guy comes in, um, I hope I don't get ganked. And when the sisters come in, I hope I don't get ganked. And then after that, you're like, crap, I hope I get the drop. Like, it was, it was insane. Like, dolmens were a pretty big, um, thing way back in the day. So this is pretty nice. It's, it's getting, uh, people to play that. Um, this means rather than having a significant higher chance of getting jewelry drops, you'll now have an equal chance of getting any piece of gear. So that's pretty cool. Any discrepancies. Um, Craglin Trials. So they, they actually put specific sets to specific trials um the shared set pool is now going to be broken up 
Um, that way it's a little bit easier to farm the sets. So Theory and Archives is going to have Healing Mage, Infallible Mage, Quick Serpent, and Defending Warrior. Hellraw, Berserking, Destructive, Eternal, Poisonous Serpent. Sanctum, Immortal, Twice Fang, Vicious Serpent, and Wise Mage. That's a pretty cool thing um, because, hey, let's say I'm missing Defending Warrior. Um, okay, I, I just need to go farm AA. I don't need to go farm all the freaking things. Um, it, it makes sense. So it's a little bit easier to farm now than to, to go and, you know, whatever. Um, Valerio Linete will drop head, chest, shoulders, and legs. The two HRs will drop hands, waist, and feet. And then completing Crackbone Trial and Normal will, will award blue quality gear while completing a trial and vet will award purple quality gear with jewelry potentially being gold. Um, so that means that I think hard mode is still like a guaranteed gold drop, but I'm wondering if they fixed it to where the jewelry could also be purple. It says purple quality gear though, but, um, yeah, it is what it is. Okay, so Hughes Bane, Doves and Hughes Bane will now drop hands, waist, feet, and set pieces in all weights. And then World Bosses, head, chest, legs, and shoulders. Um, in addition to jewelry and weapons, chests and monsters will drop sets in all slots and weights. Daily Delves, um, all stuff, added reward coffers with Hughes Bane items for the following quests. Okay, so like the following quests are going to have reward coffers with Hughes Bane set. That's pretty awesome. Get some, a little bit of gameplay from Hughes Bane and, and Gold Coast because they're doing the same thing in here. Um, and then the Dark Brotherhood still gonna continue to, um, do all the waits for Sithis. Um, and then Remain Silent will still continue to award all the slots. Um, the Bequeather, if you go to her, um, sometimes she'll give you gear in, in one of the options. Um, so she's still going to give you Sithis touch. Uh, stacking of identical crown store items. We made some changes, uh, which will allow for items that appear to be the same, but came from different sources to be stacked. Oh my goodness. That is so awesome. So <laughs> the little crown potions that you get from, um, maybe like the crown store, and then from the daily rewards will be able to be stacked. Thank God. Um, and then they're going to be unifying unsendable items. Any item that is listed as zero cannot be sold. Certain items that were previously listed as zero will be able to sold for one. Guys, get ready. Get ready to loot everything in the game. Um, that's pretty awesome. That gives a little bit of, um, you know, of... Yeah, that gives a little bit of a, a change. They have two new homes um, and PTS. The the Kellis Saron, that's the Arcanist thing, is going to be available in a future event. Um, and then this one is available in the Crown Store. Uh, Nephis just came out with um, he came out with the thing to showcase the two houses. I wasn't really impressed by how he did it i'm sure there's other youtubers out there that have better um walkthroughs of the houses but i know nefes definitely has one if you want to just take a little sneak peek um and if you're satisfied with that obviously you're good if you're not then you can definitely look up on um on youtube um i'll have the the link in the in the description for that um, so you guys can, can watch that and maybe I'll see if I can find another one, um, as well. In this update, we're providing you with new furnishings, so 22 new structural plans, um, from the Necrom Reward Coffer, so, and then 7 new Master Rip Furnishing Plans. That's cool. So they still adding the new furnishings that you could, would get with the DLC, um, but... 22 and 7, so that's not bad. 29 new master or er, 29 new furnishing plans. 
And then um, the 70 Masterets, that's from the 125 voucher. That's what they're talking about right here. <clears throat> we got the Necrim Cart, um, Dwarven Door, Tavani Lantern. That's probably going to be nice. Uh, Dark Elf Tent, Necrom, Furnace, Mirror. That's pretty nice. And these have been moved to uh, Faustina, the, the last ones that were there. And then um, these are also going to be moved to Faustina. Um, and this Faustina, you know, now for a new item, the Galen Mixture, which contain blue, purple quality recipes from Galen. Um, and you have to complete the achievements in order to be able to get these. And now you'll be able to place furnishings directly from your inventory and from the collection while in your house. Um, I thought you could already do this. Huh. I thought you could already do this, but apparently you cannot be able to like place furnishings directly from your inventory and collection screens while in your house. Okay. Um, when you have a companion, your companion will automatically be resummoned. Oh my god! Thank Jesus. I actually did not read this. Thank the Lord. When you have a companion out and you summon an assistant, your companion will be automatically resummoned when your assistant is unsummoned. Thank the Lord. That was so annoying. Oh my God. That was absolutely annoying. It was, it was hell because then you have to like go through that is that is a very good quality of life change thank you cinemax that is awesome um just a sneak peek it, there's there's gonna be our podcast is gonna have that there's gonna that's gonna be one of the well not one that's gonna be like the topic it's gonna be about companions uh clutch and calling is not optimized for all pc players which i have no idea what that is um, and they're introducing multiple new endeavor types in update 39. Um, I'm very excited to see what their endeavor activities are going to be. Um, <laughs> I wonder what else it could be. I thought they pretty much had it all covered, but, um, maybe not. Um, I'm very excited to see that. I, I really did think they had it all covered. Um, the Antiquity Skill Line Crown Store unlocked. You finally, we'll be able to unlock the Skill Line. Guys, you are going to be able to see the chest for a measly price of 50 bucks. Um, updated launcher for Mac Beta. Okay, so that's, that's all of... For PC. And then PC is going to be testing the Undaunted Celebration. Um, that's pretty awesome. And then they added two t uh, templates, item sets. The tremor scale currently have an intentional target cap of six rather than the previous unlimited targets. Okay, so this is gonna be fixed in future updates. Um, okay, the PvP death. We quickly approach the, the year's third quarterly update. You can still feel Harris Morta looming over us from Necrom. We like to get okay. Um, I mean, that's fine. Alright. Now, combat and abilities. Um, Abyssal Impact fix an issue where this morph did not cause you to unsheath your weapons on cast. Fix an issue where the skill level faster than other skill lines. Um, okay. And then the Dragon Knight. They're gonna reduce the damage bonus. Um,. I mean, they're not wrong. Dragon Knights are currently a bit ahead of many of the other classes in damage production. Um, not too far, though. They're kind of like, they're trying to bring it back into the fold. Um, so I, I get it. And it's not like that big of a drop. Um, this isn't going to be a big game changer, guys. This is going to be bringing it back to to other crop like they're not gonna stir the pot yeah um 
<clears throat> Green Dragon Blood, this morph now also adds a small heal over time and scaling of your max health. Uh, this morph no longer increases in duration of effects, but it ranks a dealing. They're seeing many tanks um, that opt to take coagulating blood over green blood, where the buffs um, bring up their offensive stats enough to eclipse the healing potential. Um, they're adding a guaranteed small heal that uses your max health to offer some divergent gameplay options, rather than bloating out the missing health values on green dragon blood. Okay, so the... I mean, it is what it is. A lot of um, tanks were using coagulating over green dragon's blood because they they were getting offensive stats um, due to the buffs in the group, and it was causing the coagulating to be better than green dragon blood in content. Um, so they're just kind of like mixing it up. Uh, dragon leap fix an issue where this can be cast on swimming targets. Oh my god, I can see it now. Now, this is pretty awesome. I'm excited about this. They reduced the cost of this ultimate, the Frozen Colossus, to 175. Oh my goodness, this is great. They're, they're bringing it on par with the Arcanist. Um, increased damage per hit by 11%. So the Necros are going to be very, very viable. And um, Glacial Colossus now extends the Major of Wound to 17 seconds. So that's going to be 20 seconds. Um, all together because it is per hit up from 12 so one two three um, Each hit so the last hit is gonna be 17 seconds from that um, so it's literally made alone for 20 seconds um, And I'm excited. This is very very good um, This is very very good for the necros. I'm very excited about that Very excited um, this morph now also increases the direction of the facts, um, for Bitter Harvest, and the reason is because Necrotic Potency was pretty freaking good, that, that is the, the way to go, um, and they're just making it to where, um, four seconds per corpse consume up from two, so they're kind of bringing it up a little bit. Um, they're, they're giving, they're kind of bringing it up to where potency is as far as good. So depending on the situation, you can do one or the other. Um, so in cap, uh, very <laughs> annoying where the ultimate could fail to be activated, but your ultimate cost was still being affected. Um, and then change the original 120 LT cost requirement for the stun. Now, <clears throat> this is pretty awesome because right now, <clears throat> Grim Focus, you don't need to activate it to generate stacks. Same with Vown Armaments from the Sork. Which means that all you have to do is just have it in your bar. Um, now, while I was listening to Skinny the other day go through these patch notes, he was saying that need, they need to test it, obviously. Um, there's going to be a lot of DPS testing in this patch um, to kind of see where these changes are made. Um, obviously, it's going to it's they're going to be a little bit better, obviously. But um, they're going to see how good that change is and whether it's good to have it on the front or back bar. He says he still thinks green focus should be on the front, but um, they need to test. Um, and then increase the cost to 1890 from 1350 because you're not like if you're really not They're increasing the cost because you don't need to activate the ability. They did the same thing with bound armaments um, and then um, This morph increased the amount of weapons spell damage to 80 then increasing the duration of the buff since the buff no longer has a duration So I mean it's it's pretty cool um, <clears throat> now this morph now swaps to minor protection for slotting on either bar rather than granting it for 10 seconds. So Dark Cloak, you have minor protection all together just for having it in your bar. Um, the Nightblades are being given some love in this. Uh, probably a lot of love considering like they, it's not bad. It's not like super crazy love, but it's not bad. Um, I'm very excited about, you know, seeing what people come up on PTS 
And I don't think anything here needs to change. I think this is perfect. If anything, like, this is fine. Leave it alone. Um, I would probably have people test the Dragon Knight just to make sure it's still, it's still nice. Um, because it is a nerf to the Dragon Knights. Um, but they need to test it to see, like, how big, how bad of a nerf it is. I don't think it's gonna be that bad. I think it's gonna be, like, 1 or 2k DPS loss, which is not bad at all. Um, they're just kind of bringing it down to earth a little bit to other classes. So I think if it's, like, 1 or 2k, I think that's fine. If it's, like, 5 to 10k, then that's where, like, okay, guys, like, come on now. That's a big nerf. But I don't think it's gonna be that bad. Uh, bound armor, obviously, bound armaments, it's, you know, you're no longer need to, to slot it on both bars, and you're granted minor protection. This is great. This is absolutely amazing. Um, they, they did, I think they did raise the, did they raise the cast? Oh, I can't remember. I, I don't see it here, so... But Storm Calling um, will rem not remove the toggle when you no longer had the necessary to act. Okay. Um, Templar, Dawn's Wrath, they're just fixing issues. Um, this fix issues, fix issues. The weapon. Guys, the bow is going to be OP. Um, obviously, I'm not going to tell you it's going to be OP, OP. There's still testing that needs to be done, but holy crap. Now you just need to have <laughs> a bow in your bar. You don't even need to use the bow skills. Like, this passive is like 2-5% to against enemies within 15 meters of you, and then the crit chance is up if they're further than 15 meters. Like, what happened? Um, their reasoning is because people were not using bows because the damage done was with bow abilities so now they just said the damage done period it's not a bad thing to test um i'm very excited about this and i'm gonna be keeping an eye out for the um the testing in this and seeing what um you know what happens here destruction staff ancient knowledge um, the flame staff increases the damage done by the initial hit of the status effects by 250 and 500, rather, rather than increasing single target damage done by 5 to 10 percent. And then the lightning staff increases the damage done with channel attacks by 6 to 12 percent. So, Arcanists and Templars unite. Um, I believe JPY was saying that Charles tested this already, and he said that the dual wield and the lightning staff were not that big of a difference. But we still need to have a little bit of testing. Uh, lightning staff's gonna be good. Next patch in some classes. Um, and they said this passage doesn't live up to the standard. Yeah, sure guys, whatever. Um, there's gonna be some classes that will still use the flame staff. Um, so don't, don't go out buying lightning staffs for all your tunes. Um, there you go. Then penetrating, um, that's gonna be a buff here. And they're, they're talking about due to the ease of access of potent armor shredding. Um, they, they're com they're converting this to be flat to offer some guaranteed consistent power. So that's not bad. Now a lot of people are like, oh, try focus. This passive now only triggers on fully charged heavy attacks rather than any tick of a heavy attack. Um, people are pissed about this, but I'm like, you know what, guys? Like, come on now. I've told you guys that you need to start doing away with one bar heavy attack works. And they're nerfing you guys a little bit. They're nerfing you guys, but it is what it is. It is what it is. I told you guys to start looking into getting better. Because, believe it or not, guys, 
there's a lot of content that can be done with like 75k dps okay a lot a lot of content yes there's some trifectas that are not able to be done with that but guess what with the power creep the way it's going you guys are going to be able to eventually get that content done at 75k dps because they're gonna keep buffing up stuff and 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 whatnot like i remember when we were at 35k dps like that was if you hit 35k dps that was awesome because at the time you were a sweaty person score pushing little hoe um most people are in the 25 to 30k dps at the time 35k was like the highest dps that you could achieve in the game and then guess what guys they upped it up like it was 45k then 50 then 55 then 60 then 65 then 70 then 75 like and now we're like in the 130s eventually you're going to be able to hit 130 because the overall dps for those sweaty people that like to score push it's gonna be a 180 because of the the way that sauce is doing the power creep eventually you're going to be able to do older content and get it done with handicap capabilities or whatnot even one bar sorks or, you know, they're going to be able to do it. I'm just saying, if you're able to not be a one bar, like, heavy attack build, if you're able to do a rotation, then just learn it, guys. Like, trust me, is going to make everything be a lot better for you. However, I understand people do have problems with their hands. I do have tendonitis in my hands, but I'm still able to play two, two bar uh, player, like, two bar tunes just fine but you guys need to like try to get you know that done but i understand there's there's people that they can't do that um they have like 100 percent hand handicap um abilities in their hand like missing fingers um you know their their hands not fully functional um they can only play with one hand like i understand that stuff and to those people those are the ones that need those one heavy attack builds you know very easy builds and eventually they're gonna be able to do trifectas too so um like the harder ones wall elements they they fix an issue um with the damage shields and then um they're giving they're giving us a reduced bonuses on the passives um so maces will not grant um so they're they're dual wield they're nerfing dual wield a little bit and then red rest of staff the the damage shield was um having some issues and then two-handed um they they kind of nerfed it a little bit but now they're increasing the damage done with all two-handed attacks by five to ten percent after completing a fully charged heavy attack so they they did like lower the penetration and weapon spell damage but they increased the all two-handed attacks by five to ten percent for four seconds after you complete a fully charged heavy attack so that's gonna be interesting like one two three four heavy attack one two three four heavy attack one two three four heavy attack that's that's gonna be the the meta and the two-handed um so i mean that that's pretty good they're they're moving away from the one-time burst bonus to the window um that's that's fair that's that's why um all of these are issues that they're resolving um these are the sets that are being updated with the area of effects use performant backend setups 
Um, they shouldn't affect any personality or any functionalities. Um, now, Merciless Charge. This is another. This set now increases your damage done with all two-handed attacks for 18 seconds after activating Crit Charge, rather than causing enemies to bleed. Um, the bonus damage to your two-handed attacks is increased by 11.16% of your higher your spell or, uh, or weapon damage. Um, that's... They're, they're basically giving us a reason to play this in both PvE and PvP and create a balance where it can be done with PvE or PvP. Um, the Crafter sets, they're fixing issues here. And then a Sure Blight, this set can only happen once every half second. So it is a nerf to Zerb Light. Um, it's not as bad, but um, targets will no longer become immune to stacks for two seconds after reaching the full stack count. Um, and this is this is where it gets better. Reduce the damage of the explosion by uh, 15%, but the damage now increased by 10% for each enemy hit up to 100% bonus damage. Um, so this, it's a little bit of a nerf, but they're kind of giving us this, the, the more increased damage for enemy hit. So it's still going to be a set that you put on your peeps. Um, and the reason they did it is because it's causing server issues and they needed to add a short cooldown between each explosion in order to improve performance. Um. So they're they're giving us the damage. They removed the the cooldown, um, and then they're giving us the damage from the building stacks, which is is nice. It's nice. So there you go. Gossamer, Overland, Trinamac, and Elfbane. Um, they're fixing issues. Trial sets. They're fixing issues. Pillager. Um, this this is actually a big one. Um, so Pillager <laughs> was targeting pets despite them not having ultimate. Um, that's a big thing. A lot of people were crazy. They're like, oh, Pillager is still not viable, blah, blah, blah. Guys, we tested it. Pillager is still fine. Um, people are like, let's go to the transformative hope set from the new trial. That set, you gotta like set up your group. It's more sweaty than Pillager. Um, even if Pillager doesn't give you, um, to, like, two people out of the group, out of the, you know, the other ten, it's fine. It's fine. We've been testing it. This has been fine. But I'm glad they're fixing it. Um, <clears throat> so there you go. If Pillager's getting fixed. And then in the Companions... Um, so Mary's not gonna comment when you harvest materials as much. Um, and then, but she comments more when you cast your ultimate. And then, um, she doesn't comment as much for the Rothgar Museum. And she is commenting thing more when you do the Morrowind and the Fighters Guild quest. And she is going to comment more when you enter combat. And she's not gonna comment when you kill last off if you're in combat. And then she's gonna be more excited about harvesting runestone. Uh, Sharpest Knight. Oh, so this is the quest. Uh, so they're just fixing issues with the quest. And then Zondar. They're fixing issues with that. Mary now gives report when looting treasure chests. Yes! That's awesome! Um, and then fix an issue with these. And then they're fixing issues with some quests. Oh, that's pretty awesome. So they reworked. I, I didn't even see this. They reworked all Dark Brotherhood guild quests so there's no longer a skill rank requirement to do the story. That's pretty awesome. Um, they're doing some achievements in here. Um, fixing issues with the quest. Uh, 
Uh, so this is probably a thing. Imperial City treasures now properly glow when you have the passive from the antiquities. That's... I didn't know that was an issue. Um, and then they fixed an antiquity dig site that was underground. Okay. They're fixing a bunch of quests. Uh, tribute NPCs are now less susceptible to patron victories. Oh. <laughs> okay. That sucks. Um. <laughs> Fix an issue where you could occasionally be prevented from queuing up. Okay. Message and, and uh, for those quests. A bunch of issues being fixed. This is great. Like, they're fixing a lot of issues. Alright, so exploration and slightly more lake fishing holes will now spawn at, the, at a time in the Telvanni Peninsula. Sigic portals in Galen will now properly reward overland sets from their relevant zones. And then um, books in the zones not being in the proper collections or just not being up to be obtained. Okay. Um... All right, dream car is apparently in the world boss are not going to be able to give you loot, which I mean they shouldn't have been anyway. They're fixing and polishing stuff in the quest. All of this all of these quests are being fixed and polished. All right, now, the um, Bastion Nimic daily quests are going to have their own unique name. That's good, because it just says Bastion Nimic, and you're like, what the heck, which one? Um, and then, the, re reduce the amount of Daedra Ickers you need to harvest to four down from five. That's nice. Um, that's that's actually pretty nice. I mean, even, you just kill two Seekers, and you have the five, though. Like, I don't think that... If you're gonna reduce it, you could reduce it to three, maybe, down from five. But maybe they'll, maybe they're still. It'll be nice to have it to three, um, because like four is just an odd number because most of the time you're already getting five if you kill two seekers, um, to get your Icker. So I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I've just been lucky, but. I believe you only need to kill two Seekers and you get five. There's a bunch of other quests that are getting. And they did the same thing with Thieves Guild to do the story. So you don't need the skill rank anymore to, to do the storyline. That's that's pretty nice. Um, And then, in Cyrodiil, you will no longer be attacked by slaughterfish while harvesting materials in certain areas of, of Cyrodiil. Um, and then you can now teleport to own homes from Cyrodiil Way Shrines. That's actually pretty nice. I like that. And then they added a short tutorial for Battlegrounds. Um, that's pretty nice. And then in the quest, you will now only see your kill enemy player quest encounter increment when you have contributed to a kill or dealt the killing blow. So you have to contribute to the kill or deal the killing blow. That's that's a little bit of a nerf, cause, um, but hey, I, 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 it says kill enemy players. You really need to contribute or, or deal the last blow. The quest is now group shared. To counterbalance the rapid progression of this quest, the number of kills required has increased from 40 to 150. Ho ho! Oh man. Oh man. Uh, so they're fixing a lot of the PvP, like trebuchets and sieges. I mean, that's fine. That's. The meat bag um, is going to get an increase to players by 17%. So meat bags are going to be a little bit better. Um, 
So meat back trebuchets are gonna be hitting, and then it doesn't accept, it doesn't affect health recovery though. So that's actually nice. It's it's uh, a little bit of a nerf, but they're giving you that 17% dot for that. And then the cold harbor trebuchet. Now it's an instant damage rather than a dot. That's pretty nice. Okay. Um, animations. They're just fixing a bunch of stuff. Oh, this is nice, guys. Look at this. The Witch's Festival. Remove the need to use the Witch Mother's Whistle to get your XP bonus for this event. It will now be passive during the Witch... Oh, no. But that means that we can't stack. Oh, no. I bet you now that once the event is over... We have to test this. But I think once the event is over, then the XP bonus goes away. I mean, this is nice because, like, you don't have to do the whistle, but it comes at a cost. Oh, no. If that is the case, then that sucks. I mean, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. It's nice. And yes... The way that, you know, you did it was circumventing the, the, the XP bonus, but man, that sucks. Um, so we have to see how this goes. I mean, this is nice. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's, it's nice to have the buff just passive during the witches event. Um, that way you don't have to do anything. You don't forget to re-up it or whatnot. But, if the buff goes away right after the event ends, that's going to suck a little bit. Because people used to use the whistle like right before the event was over, log out of that character, and then they have like an extra hour or so of the event uh, XP after the, ve the festival. Um, <clears throat> but, hey, I mean, it's, it's a nice improvement it's just that sucks if the buff goes away um so a character bound version of a crown experience scroll will list it as a bound crown in your inventory okay um furnishings they're just fixing a bunch of stuff with some furnishings they're fixing some sounds and fireplaces, missing waters, lava. Oh, that's cool. Um, they added support for DualSense, PS5, and Xbox Series X controllers on Mac. I mean, that's for PC, but that's pretty nice, though. Updated multiple in-game mail. So customer appreciation will not be displayed as the Elder Scrolls Online team. Okay, that's cool. That's that's nice. Fixing issue with pre-made groups. Oh, this yeah, this is a thing. Um, so if you got into like if you made a group, you do a dungeon. Um, it could desync some of the group members. Um, and you would have to, like, figure out which dungeon it is. So, they're fixing that. That's pretty nice. That is pretty nice. They're fixing stuff in the zones. I'm just going through these because, like, these are mainly just quests. Um, the Prophet is going to appear in Remen, Eleanor, and Vivek. And 
And then, let me see. Yep. Oh, the movement tutorial now teaches you how to jump. That's actually not bad. I did not realize that was not on there. And that makes sense. Like, just in case. Yeah, like, you might need to jump. Um, okay. Many fishing icons. Okay. Added Arcanus-related icons to the armory. That's pretty nice. Okay. Alright, and that's it. Um... That's pretty awesome, guys. Um, that that's that's it. Um, remember that our housing contest is coming out in July thirtieth. Make sure you are looking into that. It's gonna be a snug pod spring theme. You can do anything in there. It's the snug pod from Gratwood. First place five hundred k. Second place three hundred k. Third place two hundred k. Make sure you guys check that out. And, um, yeah, that's, that's going to be pretty awesome. And thank you guys, uh, for watching. And, you know, coming over here with these, uh, patch notes. And just make sure you guys, uh, check out the housing contest. If you don't know how to sign up, just get in contact with Cougar's Bay. And over Discord, over the game, and she will add you to the list of players who are currently signed up. Once the um, event ends, you will need to set that house as the primary on July 30th. And then the winners will be announced the following week during our Cougar Talk or our podcast. It's going to be one or the two. So thank you guys for watching again. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel to get more um, up to date with what we're doing. And just be on the lookout for our next podcast which is coming up in the next few days holla holla